Hi Sharks, welcome back. Today I'm going to be setting up this new palette that I got for urban sketching or, you know, whenever I'm out and about. I, You know how I use my DIY palette um, and that's all fine and good, but um, this one was so inexpensive. Um, and they have all different kinds. I'm hoping that this one will be the right size and it's not too small. I didn't want to go too big because it's one that I can hold on to while I'm painting. And my DIY palette, I can, but it's heavy because I have very full pans and I have magnets on those pans. And all of that weight builds up. So it can get heavy and it's more of a lay down thing. So I got one of these aluminum folding palettes. Um... And aluminum is not supposed to rust, so that's a good thing. I've heard a couple people complain, or read that a couple people complained about the balling up of water, but that it dissipates after use. So um, this is the size that I got. Um, they made a longer one. This is a 26 well palette, and it is 8. Um, oh, they got it in millimeters. 205 millimeters by 85 millimeters, um, and I believe it is about 8, oh, here we go, 8.03 inches or something like that. Let's see. 8 and 1 16th by 3 and, let's say 5 sixteenths. So that's not bad at all. And then when you open it up, of course, it's double. It is so lightweight, very, very lightweight. I don't know if it says how much it weighs on here. But aluminum, as you know, is very lightweight. And these are thin. But um, some people complain that theirs came with dents. So far, mine looks very good. And I can't figure out how to open it. Oh, maybe here. There we go. So this is what, it, oh, it's, I think that's going to be perfect size. This should be perfect. I was afraid these wells would be too small, but they look almost the same width as a full pan. Let me just open this palette up and see where I'm at with pans. Ouch. Oh, that hurts. These are so hard to get out sometimes. Here, let me back this one out. Ugh. There. It is just slightly under. I mean, well, these pans are thick. So if I just looked at where the paint is from there to there on the inside of the pan, it's the same width as a full pan pretty much. So that's good. Um, now i got to fix this so I can put it back in again. There we go. And that's my core palette. So... This one I can hold in my hand. I'm a lefty, so I pop this open and I can hold it like this or I can hold it like this. And this is probably the way I would hold it because I can rest it on my arm this way and I can put my thumb on this piece. And that the only thing is, is it's built for a right-handed person to dip this way into their palette. You know what I mean? With a brush, you grab a brush here and you can dip this way into your palette. For a lefty, like me, it's backwards. I have to go like this. So it may, I, may have to, I may have to hold it this way, which is not as comfortable because this edge is a little bit sharp. I think it's really meant to be held this way. But we'll see, maybe I can do it backwards. I guess I can, it won't be too hard. Have to improvise because lefties always improvise, right lefties? or correct lefties. So let me go ahead and grab the paints. This is what I did. Now if you follow me on Instagram, you know that I um, <clears throat> I post a lot of my sketches and stuff there that I have not video recorded. So if you don't follow me on Instagram or don't have an Instagram account, Instagram is so clean and smooth and nice and you can post photos there and you can follow tons of artists. It's just wonderful. So that's what I do. But here what I did was, um, excuse my messy stuff here. Um, I made this 
out the other day. And basically, um, these are the 26 colors that I'd like to put in this palette. I have Quinacridone Red, Quinacridone Magenta. These are my two reds that I always go to. New Gamboge and Hansa Medium. Although Nicolazo Yellow and Hansa Medium are very close. They're, they are close in value. Um, Nicolazo Yellow has a tendency to go darker and more gold. But I could use either or. So that could change. Um, ultramarine blue, cobalt blue, ultramarine turquoise. That's the color that everybody tells me what, you know, asks me about. Um, these are all Daniel Smith colors. That's ultramarine turquoise. Uh, neutral tint. And I'm skipping Payne's Gray because I can make Payne's Gray myself with neutral tint and ultramarine blue and I get a Payne's Gray. So I'm skipping that. Hematite. Gotta have it for its granulation effect. I'm skipping burnt umber because I can use Pimanite and raw umber to make a burnt umber. Or I can use raw umber and burnt sienna to do the same thing. So I have Pimanite, Kyanite blue, which is a sparkle color. Sugalite, which is a lavender color. It's also great for clouds and stuff like that. Um, or flowers. Mayan blue, which is similar to ultramarine turquoise. Except, what's wrong baby? Except that... Um, my in blue granulates, as you can see. Then I have sap green, green appetite, rare green earth, undersea green, which was questionable, but I did have enough room to leave it in, so I am. I love all these greens, and I use them all for different things. So um, green appetite has a tendency, if you're not careful, to get very muddy because it granulates very dark. I'll show you. Um, let me zoom in here. I don't know if you can see that, how... The granulating, I don't have a lot down for you to see, but um, it does granulate quite nicely. And it's great for grass, especially when you get it a little darker. It almost looks like you can see the dirt in the grass. Let me tilt it a little bit. You might be able to get a better view. See how it has that almost dirty effect? That's a brown color. It may not be showing up that way on camera, but it's really cool. So... I'm going to keep all these greens in. My doggie wants me to play. Um, <clears throat> yellow ochre, of course. <clears throat> now that I know that it's transparent, I'm going to use that more than I use my raw sienna, which is semi-transparent. Thank you, Eve. I think it was Eve, or was it Corey? Uh, it might have been Corey that told me that. And I looked it up and said, oh, yeah. Uh, raw umber, burnt sienna. Quinciana is my orange, Quinacridone Sienna. Rhodonite for my pink instead of Quinacridone Pink, which is very, very, very strong and very bright. I like this, this Rhodonite right now. And Jadeite was questionable too, but I like to mix it like in here in this sketch that I did over here. Oh, did I not zoom out far enough? I'm sorry. These are the other colors. Yellow ochre, raw umber, burnt sienna, quinacridone sienna, rhodonite, and jadeite. Now the jadeite I used with ultramarine turquoise over here in this sketch because the water was very turquoise in the photo. Um, this was truly the color that it was in the photo. Now I don't know if it was touched up or not, but it could have been somewhere in Alaska or something where the, the water is very blue like that. And, but the edge was more of a green blue. So I added the jadeite in. I see what you wanted. No, no, not that, baby. Here, you want this one? He wants an envelope to rip apart. So I'll give him my envelope. There you go. So anyway, I decided to keep the jadeite in. So um, we'll see. But I'm going to go ahead and fill this up. I'm going to be heading to the cottage this weekend. So for the holiday and uh, I think this will be great to try out. It's so lightweight, you guys. I think I got this for 13 bucks. Very nice. And I'm gonna try it and see how much it beads up. I hear it beads up. Maybe I'll take a magic eraser to it a little bit, but I don't wanna scratch it. And I know that that coating wears off over time. So let me grab my colors and I'll get them all set up. I'm hoping I have the colors because if I don't have the colors, um, if I've run out of something, it's going to be a bummer. <laughs> it's really going to be a bummer. There's my new gamboge. 
Tons of yellow. Here's some of my greens. Green Appetite, Undersea Green. Hookers I left. Here's my Sugalite. Kyanite. Uh, I need all of these except for my Amethyst. Uh-oh. What kind of this cerulean blue shoot? My cap didn't fit. I lost the correct cap on that. Let's see, what's this one? Cobalt Teal. Uh, I'm almost out of Quinn Magenta here, too. This is going to be a problem. Nicolazo Yellow. Quinacridone Gold. Sap Green. Quinacridone Coral. Wait a minute, was it Coral or Red? Shoot. That's a Lizard and Crimson. Here's my Quinn Red. I think I wanted quinacridone coral, not quinacridone red. Oh, shoot. Then I have my, that's duochrome. I don't need that. That's old. Oh, boy. My ultramarine is almost out also. There's phthalo. Did I even put phthalo blue in here? I did not. Well, this is wrong. I'm going to have to readjust here. Um, there's another old Patman. There's Prince Sienna, Neutral Tint. I'm not using purple. Oh, good, I found a new Ultramarine. Phew! Not using that. Burnt Umber I'm not using. Raw Umber I am. Quinn Sienna I am. That's more Van Gogh. That's Manganese. I'm not using that. Here's Thalo Turquoise. Where's my Ultramarine Turquoise? There it is. Uh, more burnt sienna. Let me use this one up first. That's a new tube. And my indigo. Gotta have my indigo. Prussian. I'm not gonna use Prussian for this. Yellow ochre. And I think that's all of them. Raw sienna. Did I already throw raw sienna in there? Raw umber. Yeah, Rossi and I'm skipping. Oh, I get them mixed up. And that's Prussian. I think we've got them all. So, let me just look here. But, my Ultramarine, I mean my Phalo, I did not grab Phalo. Oh, maybe I should skip Indigo, which I love. I don't know. Shoot, there, you know what? There's always one color that doesn't fit in your palette, you know? Isn't that always the way it goes? It's frustrating. Oh, and my cobalt. The only cobalt I have right now is a cotton and cobalt, I think. I ran out of my other one. So, I may just skip cobalt altogether and change it to Ultimer, or to phthalo. I think that's what I'm going to do. That will work. Yeah, I just want to try my quinacridone coral and see if, you know, I think it's a little warmer red than the the quinacridone red. So I may just use that instead. Let me just grab it right out of the cap here because there's always a little dab. That's the quinacridone coral. Yeah, I'm thinking I want that instead of quinacridone red. So, oh, and that's another thing. I counted these. I counted these both. So that, that'll be one. And the other one, I might be able to fit in now. Let me see. Well, let me go ahead and start setting them up, and then I'll see what Another what thing I you're going to want to do is make sure you've cleaned your palette before you start. I can't tell you how many new palettes I have bought where I've uh, forgotten to clean them out, and then i got to wait for the paint to dry and then clean this portion out. This is a piece of Magic Eraser, and I was just cleaning it. I've got a feeling I'm still going to have that problem. But I've been told that it wears off over time, and I've had palettes do the same. But this is damp, and I can see it leaving streaks behind. So we'll just have to see how it works. But I'm going to go ahead and put all my paints in now and make see if I can add in my phthalo blue. Nah, I'm going to do it this way. This is just normal for me. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. So, I don't want to fill these pans very full. Just the back end. 
I don't use a ton of red when I'm doing sketches anyway. So that'll be it for that one. Okay, now I need my Quinacridone Magenta, which is almost gone. Hope I've got enough to get in there. I've got some on my big palette, though, on my N Plein Air Pro easel palette. Hmm. Let me speed this up. So now all I have to do is just, uh, I want to make up a quick um, chart and I'll probably magnetize it to attach it to the outside. So that way I have all my colors which are lined up here so I don't forget what's what. I've got them all lined up right there. And I'm going to go ahead and make my chart and get it magnetized. That way I can put it on the outside. And I need to let these sit open so that they dry. done. I got my pigments, um, pigment numbers, light fastness ratings. I did realize my raw umber is Daler and Rowney professional series. Um, I made a little mistake here and had to redo it, but I don't care. It's just a chart. Come on. I just need enough to get through this. Oh, I made it. I made it. Did it on an angle, but that's okay. Phew! That was scary. I thought I lost it. Thought it was going to be the end. I just stick down these edges good, and then I cut it close with my trimmer, and we'll be all set. I'm just going to close that for a second. And bam. Oh, you know what? That was stupid. It's aluminum. What a waste! <laughs> Magnets don't stick to aluminum. It's not stainless steel. Oh well, I just wasted all that magnet, but at least I have a have a um, list. I don't think it'll stay in here. Yeah, it might. I might have to cut it down a little more. Well, now I just can't wait to paint something. I got my list all done, and it's a bummer I wasted this magnet, but it's nice and heavy, so I like the heaviness to these. 
when I um, use the magnetized backings and I will go ahead and set this in here. I cannot wait to get out and paint with this. It's going to be so nice to just get out there and dabble away and all of that. And um, if I'm using my M Plein Air Pro, there's extra colors on here that didn't fit on my watercolor easel. So I can easily just set that down on my other palette and I'll have all the other colors as well. Although I have a lot of doubles, I think. So we'll see. But anyhow, um, get out there and enjoy the spring weather and do some urban sketching and post them on Instagram so that I can see what you're up to. And I will keep posting mine. Have a great day, everybody. Remember, be courageous, paint with wild abandon, and most of all, be kind to each other. God bless you all. Have a great day. Bye-bye.